you know, we have this ambitious plan for 2040. We need money to fund all the projects in the plan. So I wanted to talk um, with my last few minutes about transportation funding. And I get a lot of questions about this, and it's really simple. Um, this, this, show, this slide is just showing um, you know, how all the money at the top is where we're paying uh, money at the pump or in sales tax or at a toll booth, um, and how that all gets trickled down and finally comes back locally for us to use on local roads. So this is a simplified overview, but it's still pretty complicated. Um, and um, all the money, a lot, a lot of what we deal with is the money that's getting paid is coming down, but it's only for a specific purpose. So when you pay your fuel taxes, um, the money gets kind of divided up and moved around, and there's only certain projects that we can fund with that. So while you might have a, you know, we might see a need for a highway project, maybe those dollars are not available to highways. And um, we're in a transportation funding crisis. Um, people are traveling more miles. Um, and uh, thanks to electric vehicles and increased fuel economy, um, they're, they're using less gas. So all the money we're getting through gas taxes is, is going down, but cars are still on the road and we still have um, congestion and uh, wear and tear on our roads from those cars. Um, and overall in San Benito County, um, looking at our transportation needs, we have a, a $1.8 billion need with only $1.2 billion in projected revenue. So we have a shortfall of $550 million. Um, and then just going kind of to go back to, you know, how the funds get moved around, um, our highway funds, uh, a lot of people have asked about, you know, why is, why are we having to pay for Highway 25? That's a state road. Caltrans should be paying for it. Well, the way that the highway funding comes down, um, I think it's important to try and understand um, or get some information on, is that um, highway funds go up to the state. 25% of all the dollars collected goes to Caltrans, 25%. 75% is dedicated for regions, of which San Benito County is its own region. Um, then that money further gets broken down between Northern and Southern California, where 40% goes to Northern California, and that's where we are, of course. 60% is going to Southern California. And then we get our county share of that, 40% of the 75%, um, which is based on county population and highway miles. And for San Benito County, it's about $2 million a year. So when we look at a project like Highway 25, it's gonna cost over $100 million, and you do the math, it's gonna take a lot of years of just that highway money to be able to build the project. Um, but that's why San Diego County needs to step up and, and try and fund that, or at least use our own dollars for Highway 25, um, because the state's not getting those, those dollars. They're only getting the 25% going to the state. The good news about that is it gives us local control, and it allows us to decide where we want our dollars to go. Um, Senate Bill 1 is um, a new fuel tax that's in place, as well as license fees and structural changes. So this uh, was approved back in April, and this is a, finally a new fund source for transportation, so it's helping us fill that gap and um, build up some of our resources. Um, we're not getting a lot of money in San Benito County, but we, were, we are getting some, and it's helping. Um, there's a new pot of matching funds of $200 million available statewide. So for counties that have fees and taxes in place, there's revenue that we can tap into at the state um, and, and we can do our match with our local funds um, and the state will give us some money to help us um, to fill in the gap. And we're also getting new um, public transit bus funding of about $300,000 annually. So SB1 is working in San Benito County I wanted to talk about some of the projects that we funded by um, at COG just to give a sense of you know things that um, needed to happen and and finally did happen after a lot of years of, um, of effort and um, community outreach, community efforts on getting uh, local funds built uh, for us. Um, so these are just some of the projects, you know, Highway 156 and Highway 25 bypasses. I don't think we could get around in Hollister today if those projects hadn't been built. And um, thank goodness for the Measure A committee that works um, on getting those funds. And one of the members is here, Gordon um, Machado. And, um, it, you know, those sales, we, we had Measure A. Um, we had sales tax dollars in San Diego County. We were able, able to build those important projects get that because I already talked about that. So local sales taxes, why would we consider um, going for this again? Again, this uh, builds up local revenue and it gives us local control. Um, we're able to leverage those state dollars, that $200 million annual pot of money. 
we can tap into that. Um, it gives us more control over project delivery schedule and scope. Um, we certainly saw that, I think, with the um, Highway 25 bypass, even though it took a really long time, um, it definitely helped us um, get over the hump to, uh, to be able to say these are our dollars and this is how we're spending them. And importantly, it creates jobs, construction jobs, oversight jobs, all of that when we're building stuff out there on the ground, um, jobs are being created. So just um, quickly how self-help works is it's, special, it's considered a special sales tax. It requires two-thirds voter approval. Um, it requires an expenditure plan that, talks, that um, gives us a project list, um, policies, taxpayer safeguards, um, and establishes an oversight committee. And then there's a ballot question that talks about the amount, length, and duration of the tax. Um, measure A in 1989 was successful with 80% approval. That's a previous effort we had in San Diego County. And Measure P in 2016, we had almost 60% approval. So we are looking at um, uh, going for a new tax, and these are just some of the revenue estimates. A 30-year uh, one-cent tax could generate as much as uh, $490 million. And that is what the COG Board is currently considering. And with that, we can match revenue sources um, that we already have existing locally, including our impact fees that developers are paying, as well as all the other uh, state and federal funding. So um, our schedule for the sales tax is different than the RTP schedule. Um, we're working on a public outreach now, so I do appreciate the time to come out and talk to you all today. Um, we're gonna be doing a voter survey where we, um, we look at voter approval ratings. It's gonna be a telephone and web-based survey. Um, and um, we'll be doing expenditure plan and ballot question development all this spring, looking at having something out on the street in May. And our next step is we have a special meeting coming up Saturday, February 3rd at 1 o'clock p.m. So we're doing a Saturday special meeting. That's not something we've done before. We're probably maybe some commuters and folks who can't get out to our regular talk meetings or evening meetings can be there. So I invite you all to join us and I'll um, have that information up on our website soon. That's all I have. Thank you so much for your time.